Big Nate, Move It or Lose It by Lincoln Purse I didn't even look at the schedule. Who are we playing? Just Desserts. Wait, what? There's another team in the league sponsored by a bakery? Yup, they're supposed to be good too. How good? Ask Chad. He keeps notes on all the teams. Chad, tell me everything you know about Just Desserts. Ah, they began as a wedding cake business, but four years ago they started offering a wide variety of treats. They now make cakes, pies, muffins, croissants, breads, scones and all kinds of pastries. Everyone raves about their eclairs, but give me their honey buns any day. Sweet scouting report. I just wanted to know if their pitcher has a good curveball. Kids, to celebrate a great season, I'm treating the team to dinner. Ooh, since Cressley's is our sponsor, can we go there? Cressley's is a bakery, Chad. Uh-huh. It doesn't serve sit-down meals, so? We're just eating donuts and pastries. Aha! My point exactly! It's a no, Chad. Hi, my name's Calhoun. Party of 15. Ah, yes, you called earlier. Let me just confirm your order. Three plain, two pepperoni, two veggie, two sausage and onions, three Caesar salads, and three baskets of garlic bread. Right, and two aspirin. Very good, sir. It was a stressful ride in the minivan. Hey, gang, while we wait for our pizza, let's give out some team awards. We'll start with our most valuable player trophy. Ooh, ooh. Yes, can I have that one? That's not how awards work, Nate. Yeah, but I figured, why not ask? This season's most improved player is... Teddy! Great job, Teddy. You really raised your batting average this year. Yes, but that's a bit misleading. While he may have had more hits, his slugging percentage actually went down and his low RBI totals made him one of the league's least productive players. Francis, there's a time and a place for statistical analysis. I have here some pie charts. And the Team Spirit Award goes to Nate. Thanks, coach. I'd just like to say a few words. And if any of you clowns eat my garlic bread while I'm up here, heads will roll. That means you, Kyle. I may have to take the award back. And the Offensive Player of the Year award goes to Chester. Hear that, Chester? Ha <laughs> ha, you're offensive. Squonk! You offended him. Was that really necessary? I'm looking for three ring binders. I'll four, ma'am, on the left. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> young man, young man, he can't sleep here. Hmm? You'll have to leave the store. I would love to leave the store. I've been trying to leave the store for two hours. Two hours! Which notebook goes best with this backpack? What's all this? I'm creating the NCU, the Nate Cinematic Universe. Superhero movies make zillions of dollars. It's time for me to get in on that action. I mean, how hard can it be to make a good superhero movie? Pretty hard. Yeah, remember Dark Phoenix? 
I'll try not to. The Nate Cinematic Universe is a complex world filled with kick-butt superheroes. Like who? Like the gnome. He's a lawn gnome who comes to life during a wacky DNA experiment. Then he develops superpowers and... Hold it. Why is a lawn gnome part of a DNA experiment? Maybe he's a genome. Uh-huh. I'll deal with that in post-production. Every cinematic universe needs a leader. Here's mine. Captain Crush? Thanks to a radioactive meteor shower, he has massive arms. He crushes everything he gets his hands on. Determined to use his powers for good, he forces a group of reluctant superheroes to join his crime-fighting society. Why are they reluctant? They're not crazy about the secret handshake, but they'll live. Here's another member of the Nate Cinematic Universe, Office Boy. He starts as a humble mailroom clerk, but when he's bitten by mutant fleas, he develops superpowers. What kind of superpowers? A huge overbite and the ability to fix printer jams. Those don't sound so super, just saying. Yeah, he's mostly comic relief. Is there any romance in the Nate Cinematic Universe? Is there ever? Meet Hot Mess, a beautiful but troubled fire goddess. Everything she touches bursts into flames. And then there's Tumbleweed, a superhero who's literally made of dried grass. He and Hot Mess fall in love, but tragically, I think I know what happens. Dear sir, we have received your proposal for a series of movies based on your self-invented cinematic universe. Your characters are hackneyed retreats of existing superheroes. Your storylines are as compelling as a bowl of vanilla yogurt. Frankly, your entire submission resembles the impulsive ramblings of a marginally literate ten-year-old. Tough, but fair. Ten? I'm eleven and a half! Your school schedule came. Ooh, who'd I get for homeroom? Looks like your homeroom teacher is... Mr. Rosa. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! Mr. Rosa is the best! This is the happiest day of my... Oop, hold it. I read it wrong. I was looking at your class list. You have Mr. Rosa for art, first period. It's Mrs. Godfrey you have for homeroom. You deserve that. I'm just glad he wasn't holding a rake. I feel bad for Labor Day. It's supposed to be a celebration of workers and industry, but instead everyone associates it with summer ending and school starting. It should be great, but it's ended up being horrible. Labor Day is the Nicholas Cage of holidays. He's given this some thought. So, according to you, Labor Day is the Nicolas Cage of holidays. Correct. Then what about other holidays? What's Thanksgiving? What's Halloween? What's Arbor Day? Duh. Thanksgiving is Beyonce, Halloween is Johnny Depp, and Arbor Day is Glenn Morshower. Who's Glenn Morshower? Exactly. Ah, my trusty locker. Just as I left it. And look, my wad of bubblegum is still stuck to the shelf. Chomp, 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 chomp. That's so gross. Wait, this is my locker. That's so gross. Welcome to our first assembly of the year, everyone. 
For you new students, I'm Principal Nichols. For the rest of you, I'm still Principal Nichols. Ha <laughs> ha. Thirty seconds in and he's already broken the lame meter Ha! Huh, he told the joke last year. Hello, Nate. Welcome back. Hi, Mrs. Godfrey. How was your summer? Pretty good, I guess. I thought perhaps your answer would be too short. Ah uh ha! -huh. Ah uh ha! -huh. It's exhausting to pretend I don't hate her. Think how hard she's working. Welcome back, everyone. I trust you all had an enjoyable summer. I did. My family vacationed in Maryland, so I took the opportunity to conduct research on levels of ocean acidity in the Chesapeake Bay. I shared my data with the scientists at the Chesapeake Biological Lab, and they invited me back next summer as part of the prestigious internship program. Wonderful. Can I go get some air? Gina's sucking all the oxygen out of the room. Race you to the fence? No. Oh, come on, Francis. Why not? You're faster, so you win. Where's the drama in that? I'll give you a five-yard head start. No. A ten-yard head start? Nope. I'll run with my hands in my pockets. Nah, -uh. I'll hop on one foot. No, I'll run blindfolded. Deal. In retrospect, racing in an open field might have been a better option. There's the drama. Hi, Alan. Actually, I'm not Alan anymore. I got tired of the name Alan, so I asked my parents if I could use my middle name instead. That's cool. So what's your new name? Nate, what? Just like you. So all of the sudden your name's Nate? Yep, what do you think? Well, uh, I've always been the only Nate in school. Huh, I know. Now everyone will mix us up. The teachers will have to start calling us Nate C and Nate W. I don't want to be Nate Stinking W. Your middle name's Stinking? Yowza! What's got you so riled up? Alan Chen has changed his name to Nate Chen. Yeah, I heard so. So? It means I'm not the only one. Being the only Nate in school is who I am. It's my identity. I thought your identity was being the kid who burned his eyebrows off in science lab. They grew back. I've moved on. Hi, guys. Oh, hi, Alan. Whoops, I forgot. Your name is Nate now. Sorry, man. It's just that you look like such an Alan. That's the least passive case of passive aggression I've ever seen. I must tell the truth as I see it. Principal Nichols, I'm sure you've heard that Alan Chen has changed his name to Nate. Frankly, having two Nates in the school is confusing. It's causing all kinds of chaos. The only solution is for Alan to pick a different name, something besides Nate. Are you really in my office protesting a classmate's name? How about Tom or Ichabod? Hi, Al, uh, Nate. Oh, no, it's Alan again. I miss the name Alan. It's a much better name than I realized. It's elegant, you know. It's distinguished. There's nothing distinguished about Nate. That depends on which Nate you're talking about. Hey, Dorcas, your fly's open. Good luck to both teams. Thanks, Ref. Red goalie? Ready. Blue goalie? Blue goalie? If it's not too inconvenient, we'd like to start the game. One sec, I'm finishing up a podcast. If I make this shot, it means I'm gonna ace the math test.
Clang. Okay, if I make this shot, I'm gonna ace the math test. Clank. If this one goes in, I'll ace the math test. Clong. This one counts. If I make it, it means I'll ace the math test. Clunk. Okay, this is it. If I make this, I will ace the math test. Swish. Yes. Aren't you supposed to be studying for the math test? Got it covered. Wanna trade? I've got tuna fish. Maybe. Hey, those guys are sitting at our table. They can sit wherever they want. They're eighth graders. But it's our table. Not anymore. It's theirs now. They must be stopped! This could end in bloodshed. As long as it's not my blood, I'm fine with that. How come you're so bent out of shape about those guys taking our table? You just said it, Teddy. It's our table. We sit there literally every day. It's tradition. Think of all the stuff that happened at the table. The laughter. The tears. And that time you stuck a chili pepper up your nose. Laughter and tears. Yeah, probably should have thought that one through. I'm gonna go ask those eighth graders to give us back our table. Seriously? You're that into the whole tradition thing? It's not just tradition, Francis. Sitting there is good luck. If we don't sit at our regular table, something bad could happen. Like getting beaten up by a bunch of eighth graders, for example. Hold my lunch. I'm gonna get this on video. What do you want? Uh, hi. You guys might not know this, but that table you're sitting at is where my friends and I always sit. We are, you know, sort of attached to it. So, would you be willing to move? Sure, I'd be willing to move. I'll move my fist to your face. I may have to think up a plan B. We're sitting here. Get lost, scrub. No, I'm going to stand here and protest until you guys give us back our table. Oh, okay. But if you're gonna protest, why stand? Won't you rather sit? Uh, well, sure. Technically, I don't think you can call this sitting. It's more of a modified slouch. Why am I letting these 8th graders push me around? I've got a secret weapon. Chad. One dose of his lethal cuteness and those clowns will give us back our table pronto. Hey clowns, give us back our table pronto. I guess my cuteness isn't as lethal as it used to be. Next time, we rehearse first. If I make this shot, it means Annie's gonna fall madly in love with me. Not this again. You always do this. You're randomly giving a basketball some kind of magical significance. It's just a ball. It doesn't have the power to affect unrelated events. You're making a basket has nothing to do with how another person thinks or feels. So you're saying this basketball has no effect on people? That it can't impact someone's state of mind? That's exactly what I'm saying. Wonk, I disagree. Mr. Galvin just posted the new lab partner list. Ooh, who do I get? Poor Chad. Guess what? You and I are lab partners for the next project, Chad. We, we are? Yes, and do you know what that means? It means we'll be working very closely together. Wink, 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 a wink. Is Chad having some sort of stress in due Caesar? He's blinking help in Morse code. It's fun being lab partners, isn't it, Chad? Uh, sure. 
I happen to think you and I make a pretty good team. Even though we're doing a biology experiment, I'd see you and I have great chemistry. Ha ha. Ha ha. This is painful to watch, and yet I cannot look away. Gina's pretty psyched to be a lab partner, Chad. She wants to be more than lab partners. She wants us to be a couple. Just tell her you're not interested. I don't know how without hurting her feelings. You're too nice, dude. Too nice? That's it! We'll create a bad Chad. Here's the plan, Chad. We'll hypnotize you to make you totally obnoxious. Then Gina won't have a crush on you anymore. Problem solved. Okay, the first step is to establish a baseline. Chad, say something obnoxious. I don't know what you mean. The baseline is zero. The baseline is indeed zero. You're getting sleepy, Chad. Very sleepy. When I snap my fingers, you'll no longer be nice, Chad. Sweet Chad. Innocent Chad. You'll be obnoxious, Chad. Sarcastic Chad. Insufferable Chad. Snap. Me? Haha, oh, golly. Whoops. Let's start over. Okay, hypnosis attempt number two. If this works, he'll be a completely different Chad. Snap. What are you losers looking at? Success! It worked! We did it! What worked? What did you do? We hypnotized you, Chad, so that Gina won't be in love with you anymore. He hypnotized me? You? You don't look bright enough to hypnotize a pile of rocks. Aha! Uh -huh. What are you laughing at, Dipwad? Not a thing, sir. Here comes Gina. Now we'll see the new Chad in action. Hi, Chad. I'm excited for Science Lab later. And I'm excited for this boring conversation to be over. What? Why are you still talking? What's wrong with you, Chad? Why are you acting so strange? Oh, so I'm strange? Well, I think I'm acting just right. I'm not the doormat I used to be. I'm Chad to the bone, baby. So I either climb on board or get out of my way. Did he just call himself Chad to the bone? Our little boy's all grown up. Mr. Galvin, may I please have a new lab partner? Why? Because Chad is being disrespectful and rude. Frankly, Gina, I find that hard to believe. Believe it, pencil neck. There's a new force in town. I beg your pardon. Behold the Chadaclism. Mission accomplished, Chad. Gina now thinks you're a total jerk. Now I'll unhypnotize you and bring back the real Chad. Snap! 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 Chad, get your fingers out of my face, pinhead. What did you clowns do to Chad? We uh, hypnotized him. We made him unlikable so Gina would stop crushing on him. Well, he overdid it. He's a first-class jerk. Change him back, Nate. I tried. It didn't work. You mean, this could be permanent. Move it or lose it, Wimpus. Shove. Any change? See for yourself. Hey, Danica. Which of these is the correct definition of Chad? A. A country in Africa. Or B. A red-headed love missile on a collision course with you? Yuck. We've officially reached crisis proportions. I owe you guys a thank you for my transformation. Before you hypnotized me, I was a total loser. No, you weren't. Everyone loved you. Who? Me? 
Oh, wowza! Whoa, what was that? That was Chad! Feel weird. What's going on? The real you is fighting to get out. What do you mean, the real me? The nice Chad. The sweet Chad. The Chad who comes to school every day with the Hello Kitty lunchbox. Ark. Chad! It's working! Go to the light, Chad! What's happening? The real Chad's trying to break through. <coughs> but the bad Chad keeps dragging him back. It's like the exorcist. Yeah! <coughs> if his head starts spinning around, I'm out. Ditto with the projectile vomiting. Gork! <coughs> You can do this, Chad. Come back to us, Chad. Think of baby pandas. Think of the sound of music and fudge brownies and my little pony. Yeah! Golly, hi, fellas. He's back. Ah, the wind keeps blowing dirt in my eyes. I wish we could practice inside. Hey, what's that? Is that an animal? Um, I think so. Could be a squirrel or a baby woodchuck. Whatever it is, it's coming this way. Nab, smack. If I hear a peep out of you, you'll be doing wind sprints for a week. Moments later. Worth it. So worth it. Run! Nate. I hope that you can give to me some advising. Sorry, Arthur, I'm a little busy, but it is girlfriend advising. And about girls, you are total export guy. So true. Are you sure you don't have him confused with someone else? Okay, here is situation. Jenny's my total awesome girlfriend. We all know that, Arthur. Yes, but lately I am also have feelings for different girl. What? You've got a crush on somebody else? Who? Huh. <sighs> Doing. Really? Dee Dee? You have a crush on Dee Dee? Well, I am think about her a lot. But also still think of Jenny too. I am crazy for both of them. Hold on, you can't go out with two girls at once. Arthur, Nate's right. Only I have that kind of mojo. Arthur, Nate's wrong. Alright, Arthur, the first step is to see if Dee Dee likes you. But you can't let Jenny see you nosing around Dee Dee. So I'll handle it. This will take finesse. It'll take subtlety. It'll take discretion. Hey, Didi, let's talk romance. Me? Arthur likes me? That's what he says. But he's with Jenny. Yeah, he still likes her too. But apparently, he's got a crush on you that you just can't deny. And so my considerable charms have claimed another victim said the president of the drama club. What should I tell Arthur? Tell him to grow up, that's what. Ooh, I like Jenny, but I also like Dee Dee. Poor me, what a dilemma. He's just looking for permission to date two girls at the same time. He wants to have his cake and eat it too. Did somebody mention cake? No, Chad. Go back to Arthur, Nate, and tell him the answer is N-O. He's already got a girlfriend. Does he actually think I date him on the damn wall? Tell him Dee Dee Holloway won't be sidecar Sally. Okay, but I reserve the right to phrase it differently. Fun fact, I threw up in a sidecar once. Arthur, Dee Dee has no interest in dating you. Ah, okay, 
That is big relief. Relief? Yes, because I'm changed my mind. Jenny is girl for me, which I'm realized now finally. I must tell Jenny how my crush on Didi was total crazy. Bad idea. Bad, 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 bad idea. Hold your horses, Arthur. You can't tell Jenny you had a crush on Didi. But why not? Because she'll get mad that you had feelings for somebody else. Huh? No, she won't. You do not know Jenny. Oh, I don't. You mean the Jenny I had a crush on from first grade until last year? I don't know that Jenny. You're that chat? Apparently, I don't know Jenny. You're stretching my sweatshirt. If you tell Jenny you had a crush on Didi, even if it's over, she's not gonna like it. So you're saying I should lie? It's not lying, Arthur. It's protecting her feelings. But what about honesty is the best policy? What about keep concerns clear and never fear? What about the truth will set you free? What about you are out of your stinking mind? That one I've not heard. I use it a lot. It's true. He says it to me all the time. There is Jenny. I'm going to tell to her about how I had crush on Dee Dee. Don't do it, Arthur. Yes, Nate. My relationship with Jenny is based on trust. You what? Also, relationship is based on Jenny yelling super loud. I love the communication. So, Arthur, are you and Jenny still together? Of course. She was at first mad a little bit, but eventually she totally forgave me. All I have to do is apologize. Many times a day for the rest of my life. Yay, a happy ending. What's up? We're testing Nate's sense of smell. He claims his nose is superhuman. Okay, what is it? A piece of chalk, obviously. And this? A seagull's feather. A 2017 Mookie Betts baseball card. A yogurt-covered raisin wrapped in tin foil. He's amazing! Okay, this'll stump him. I smell Chad's butt. Chad? That's nasty, dude. I'm always a little gassy after lunch. Hot one, hot two. Hello, guys. Can I play? Sure, Arthur. Just find another guy. Another guy? We can't play with an odd number of people. We need six, not five. Find another guy and we can play three on three. Okay. Hot one, hot two. Guys, I found somebody. Let's show them the old razzle dazzle. Way to drop the ball, Arthur. He's five minutes late. Here he comes. Nate! Nice costume. He said he was gonna be the genie from Aladdin and he pulled it off. Wonder how he turned his skin blue. He didn't. It's 38 degrees out here. So cold. Well, my first trick or treat is, yeah, we like to get an early start. No, I mean you're my first trick or treat is ever. I just moved in. I'm a first time homeowner. Help yourselves, boys. Rookie mistake. I'm sure he's got another bowl somewhere. Trick or treat. Great costumes. Here you go. Uh, what kind of candy is this? Yummy, that's what. It's vegan. I knew we were in trouble when we saw the soy milk cartons in a recycling bin. Ag! Trick or treat. Here you are. One candy bar for each of you. Huh? Mrs. Mitchell next door gave us each two of these. She what? Here, take two. Take three. 
Who does she think she is? They hate each other. He understands neighborhood dynamics. Trick or treat. I'm awfully sorry, kids. I underestimated how much candy to buy. I'm all out. Hey, no problem, man. Stuff happens. All kinds of stuff. You're going to vandalize my house, aren't you? Sir, the term is retaliatory hijinks. Trick or treat? Ah, you're the genie from Aladdin. Yep. In exchange for some candy, can you do some of his funny voices? Or even better, sing one of his songs. You're not Robin Williams. You're not even Will Smith. All that for a lousy roll of sweet tots? Chad, where were you on Halloween? How come you didn't go trick-or-treating? My grand didn't want me to. She thinks I'm too heavy, so she paid me 40 bucks to skip trick-or-treating. Wow, what do you do with all that money? I bought 12 pounds of candy corn. In his own way, Chad's a rebel. Lots of good post-Halloween sales out there. Chad, don't you get sick of your grandmother bugging you about your weight? It's not just my weight. She picks on me about other stuff, too, like my personality. She thinks I'm too nice. She says I'm too agreeable. That's what makes you PS38's most beloved sidekick. I agree. Thanks for being so nice, Graham. Well, my goodness, what brought this on? My friend Chad's grandmother is always criticizing him and stuff. Oh dear, she's really strict. Maybe she's trying to toughen Chad up and make him a more capable adult. Some children need that. Mother, I have a splinter. I was just telling Graham how awesome she is. Is that so? Yeah, she's not like Chad's grandmother, who's always yelling at him. I've never heard Graham yell at anybody. She picks her spots. Well, you left your ear hairs in the sink. Gramps, it's your birthday next week. It is indeed. I was thinking, what if I give you a dog? A dog? I'm too old for a dog. That's the whole point. When you die, I'll take the dog. It's a win-win. Except for that part with the dead grandfather. Gramps and I just raked the whole yard, Uncle Ted. How come you didn't help? Perhaps, young Nate. You've forgotten about the splinter I had earlier. Graham took it out, though. Yes, but then while I was enjoying a box of delicious Cheez-Its, some salt got in the wound. The pain was excruciating. So is this conversation. Time for a celebrity interview with your host, Biff Biffwell. I'm chatting with Halloween fashion consultant Coco LaPuff. Bonjour, Biff. Coco, why do kids need fashion advice for Halloween? They don't. The parents do. You see, Biff, Halloween is now just as popular among adults as it is with children. But how can I put this? Adults often select costumes that are not flattering. That's where you come in, eh? Exactly. If folks commit a fashion crime, I let them know. But what if you're not there to save them from themselves? Then it's up to a family member to do it. Someone must tell these people the truth about their Halloween costumes before they go out in public. I am legendary Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps. No, you are not. I was just organizing all my Halloween candy. Sounds fun. Actually, it was kind of boring. Everybody gives out the same candy nowadays. Sneakers, Reese's, 
Kit Kats, Skittles. Don't get me wrong, those are great candies. But how about a little variety, people? Where's the sugar babies? Where's the good and plenties? Where's the health bars and the bitter honeys? I'm sick and tired of eating the same old candy. And yet, somehow, you found a way to go on. Gramps is patronizing me again. Pat, pat. That's nice, sweetie. Bring Oop, the bell. I totally lost track of time. I'm late for social studies. Ah, the door's still open. I can slip in before anybody sees me. Freeze, hall monitor. Kim, since when are you a hall monitor? Since right now. Want you in class. Want you in class. Because this is my free period. But instead of wasting it hanging out in the cafeteria, I'm spending it busting perps like you. Perps? Up against the wall, dead bag. You don't seem like the whole monitor type, Kim. I have always aspired to a career in law enforcement. I like following rules. I enjoy having my classmates fear and respect me. Plus, this vest is totally adorable on me, don't you think? I said, don't you think? I never thought I'd say this, but I wish I was in social studies right now. You don't have a hall pass. That's a detention. Why would I need a hall pass? I was on my way to class. You were running in the hallway. That's a detention. I was running so I won't be late. But you were late. That's a detention. I was late because you stopped me outside the classroom. You're not using your indoor voice. That's a detention. She's drunk with power. Hi, Mrs. Cherokee. Oh, dear. What happened, Nate? I ran into Kim Cressley, the world's most psychotic hall monitor. What a jerk. What a pant load. She could have been nice about it, but instead she gave me four detentions. Five. I'm writing you up for verbal abuse. Oh, how I hate her. It's not fair. I can maybe see getting one detention, but five? I mean, come on. I'm supposed to be playing football with the guys right now, not sitting at this stupid desk. And all because I was, what, ten seconds late for class? Who does Kim Cressley think she is? It's a total injustice. It's not supposed to be students who... Here. My homemade ginger snaps make everything better. This is the most disgusting cookie I've ever had. If you give football a chance, Peter, I know you'll like it. I sincerely doubt that. Just let me give you a few pointers. No. The spot where the play begins is called the line of scrimmage. Boring. If I hand the ball to a teammate, that's a running play. Not interested. If I throw the ball to a teammate, that's a passing play. <sighs> And this is called a punt. Doof. Crash. You broke my lawn gnome. I'm starting to see the appeal of this game. Ah, now that's what I'm talking about. A boy, a piece of paper and a box of crayons. The simple pleasures, am I right? I mean, I know you're a genius and everything, Peter. But it's great to see you just being a kid for a change. And you know what I really like? You're just letting it rip. You're not trying to make something that looks real. It's just colors and shapes and... This is a diagram of electromagnetic vortex flow patterns. I knew that. Hand me the turquoise. School picture guy. Ah, the eagle has landed. What's up, kid? I'm here for a retake. My first picture was horrible. Bad hair? 
big zit, chocolate milk moustache, which the photographer didn't tell me about. My bad, kid. I thought the puberty fairy had paid you a visit. Okay, kid, let's do this. Hold it, I need to strategize. Strategize? I have to decide on a look. Do I play it straight, like this? Or does the camera prefer a dashing smile? Frankly, kid, the camera wants to go home and watch Netflix. Let's workshop this. Can we get a focus group in here? Come on, kid. Time's a wasting. Hold it. I feel a good expression coming on. Yes, yes, here it comes. Here it comes. And voila. How's this grab you? Like the Hamlet maneuver. Okay, I think I found the perfect look for my school picture. It's a look that'll drive the ladies wild. Strong, yet vulnerable. Shy, yet sassy. I call it burning embers. Burning embers? What do you think, kid? It's a fine line between burning embers and a dumpster fire. Kid, you're overthinking this. You're letting the camera psych you out. Just relax. Do a little deep breathing. Inhale. <gasps> Good. Good. Now exhale. <sighs> Click. Wait, did you just take my picture? Affirmative, amigo. But I wasn't ready. I was in the middle of a giant exhale. Okay, kid. Okay, we'll do a countdown. A countdown? You mean like three, two, one? Right. Three, two, one. Okay, just let me decross my nose. Click. What the? Who put a rubber duck in there? With Sherman. I did, yesterday. I thought he might like some company. Company? A rubber duck isn't company, Gina, you pinhead. It's just a thing. Would you put a pencil in his cage to keep him company? Or a coffee mug? Sherman isn't about to use a rubber toy for companionship. He's too smart for that. I'm gonna miss all waddles. And here's his food and his blanket. Gotcha. You have my cell number, right? Have fun. We will. Thanks, Mr. Astis. Isn't this great, Spitzy? You get to hang out at my house all week. It'll be like a giant slumber party. We can stay up late. We can play games. We can do anything we feel like doing. So, what do you want to do first? Zip! Triple toe loop. And she nails it! You're sleeping in the garage. Uh, what's this all about? Mr. Astis is on a trip, so I'm dog-sitting Spitzy for a few days. He can't stay at his own house? What? Of course not. He'd be too lonely. Spitz is sensitive, Dad. He's very soft-hearted. <laughs> to my big brother George, the richest man in town. Oh, see. Hello. Hey, Didi. What's up? Me? Not much. Just hanging out with Spitzy, watching some Christmas specials. Yeah, we're doing Rudolph right now. Worf! 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 He's identifying with the misfit toys. Ah, the year without a Santa Claus. This is a great one. See, the Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus. That's Jingle Bells, the elf, and that's Jangle Bells, and there's Vixen. And there's Ignatius Thistlewhite. Grrr! Yeah, that's what everyone says. Okay, Spitzy, this next special is called Frosty the Snowman. 
See? These kids make a snowman, and then he comes to life and smacks smack. Oh. The critics have spoken. This one's a classic, Spitzy. A Charlie Brown Christmas. Worf? Yep, that's Charlie Brown right there. The kid with the blanket is Linus, and there's Lucy. And that's Snoopy. Worf? No, he's not a cat. Worf. Yes, the Grinch is starting on Channel 5 right now. <coughs> it's the Jim Carrey version. I'm gonna get you, you little weasel. You're dead meat. Oh, real brave. Hiding like a scared baby? Well, guess what? He can't stand there forever. I'll just sit right here and wait you out. Every locker needs an escape title to the supply closet. Maybe just your locker. What's going on? Rehearsal. I'm directing the drama club production of A Christmas Carol. I'm Bob Cratchit. I'm the ghost of Jacob Marley. Who's Scrooge? Bat and humbug, everybody. I think you have a casting problem. Yaha, <laughs> this beer tickles. Uh, Dee Dee, don't you think Chad's too nice to play Scrooge? Of course, but nobody wanted the part. I play Scrooge, but I'm already the director. Plus, you're a girl. What's that supposed to mean? You think a girl can't be mean enough? Huh? This is called acting, by the way. You're good at it. Chad, I'm recasting you. You're going to play the part of Tiny Tim. Ooh, yay! But who's going to be Scrooge now? I'm not sure yet. But someone will show up who's nasty enough to make a convincing Scrooge. Out of my way, pinhead. Shove. Randy, how do you like to play Scrooge in A Christmas Carol? Forget it. Being a stupid play is too much work. Yes, it would be demanding. I mean, it's the lead role. It takes a smart person to learn all the dialogue. Well, hey, I'm plenty smart. So am I. Count me in. Nate, I need you to join the show. Ah, oh, I knew you'd come looking for me. Daryl has mono. He can take his place. Mm-hmm. And what role will I be playing? Snowball boy, Fezziwig dancer, and unremarkable bystander number three. A star is born. Shut up. Oh, and here's your script. Many can't go there, Mr. Scrooge, and many would rather die. Well, then they... they... Ah! I blew my stupid line. Again? Don't worry, you'll get it. But there's so much to memorize. Isn't there a way to cut some of my dialogue? What if instead of talking, I just punch him in the face? Let's take five for a safety break. Hold it. Cut. Cut. Randy, you're playing this scene too low-key. We need more of a reaction. You've just seen the ghost of Jacob Molly, your former business partner. You should be freaked out. But you said Scrooge is supposed to be mean and grouchy. Yes, but that doesn't mean he can't be shocked. You barely seem surprised. Well, excuse me for not being Joe Actor. You're the drama queen, Dee Dee. Why don't you tell me how to act surprised? Honk! Like that. You're welcome. What's wrong? 
The curtain goes up in five minutes, and Randy's not here. We can't perform a Christmas carol with that Scrooge. Dee Dee, relax. Randy's just trolling us. He likes to mess with people. He'll show up ten seconds before curtain just to freak everybody out. He's probably laughing his butt off right now. I can't do this. Randy, there you are. Shh, don't tell anyone I'm here. Don't what? But you're the star of the show. Not anymore. I can't do it. Wait, you mean you've got Scrooge fright? Shut up. Randy, you've got stage fright? Go ahead, laugh. Who's laughing? I know what it's like. I've had stage fright before. I'll tell you about it. Good idea. Let's make this about you. The crowd roared as I walked on stage at the school assembly. Okay, Randy, here's what we'll do. We'll shock you out of your stage fright. How? Smack. Shove. We found Scrooge. Get off me, butthead. Make me jerk face. What is going on here? The show starts in two minutes. I was trying to help Randy with his stage fright. You're the drama club president, Dee Dee. You must know how to deal with stage fright. Of course I do. Every actor has had performance anxiety at some point, Randy. I understand completely. Now put on your costume and get out there or I'll wring your neck. You kids put on a fine show. Yeah, Randy was actually a pretty good Scrooge. And I wasn't too shabby either, if I do say so myself. Even though I had a small part, I still managed to get noticed. He fell off the stage. I mean, a star is born, am I right? Hello again, hockey fans. This is Stan Polkcheck, high above ringside, and I'm former NHL All-Star, Deke Boarding. There's a buzz in the building today, Deke. As there should be, Stan. It's a big moment when ever Nate Wright takes the ice. You're so right, Deke. This kid's a star. By the end of his career, he'll hold all the records. He lines up for the opening face-off and wins it easily. He has the hands of a cat burglar and the speed of a cheetah. Look at him blow past the opposition. He's unstoppable. Or is he? We've got a game going here. Tough, noogies. Got a brand new Monopoly game for Christmas. Oh, good. As is like 50 years old. Let's set it up. Ah, oh, I love the smell of fresh money. Hey, the pieces are different. The thimble is gone. Wait, which one was the thimble? The one he thought was a coffee filter. Oh, yeah. Timblet get no respect. Looks like Monopoly decided to modernize. They got rid of the thimble, the wheelbarrow, the iron and the shoe. And they added a penguin. Uh-huh. A rubber ducky, a T-Rex, yup, and a cat. No! Why did Monopoly have to add a cat to its game piece lineup? Hey, it's only fair. They've had a dog piece for decades. Yes, because the dogs are awesome. Compare the game pieces. The dog is proud, spunky, completely adorable. The cat has dead eyes and an evil smirk. Maybe we should just play Boggle. How goes the Monopoly game? Good. Who's who? Nate's the top hat. I'm the race car. And because Monopoly caved in to the feline deep state, Francis is a cat. I didn't know there was a feline deep state. That's what they want you to think. Oh, brother. 
can't get used to these new Monopoly pieces. They make the whole board look different. Everything seems alien. This just doesn't feel like a typical game of Monopoly. Yes, it does. You just stole $200 from the bank and stuffed it in your sock. Oh, did I? Seven, eight rats. Ha, huh, you landed on my hotel. Since my hotel has a strict no pets policy, this cat will have to find other accommodations. Fling, hey! Plus, you owe me $1,000. It happened again. What did? We got takeout last night and my fortune cookie gave me a bogus fortune. These things are supposed to tell you what's going to happen in the future. This one is just some random statement. What's it say? Unexpected events are the spice of life. That is not a fortune! Pow! Except it sort of is. I hate you so much. What's up? I'm creating IP. IP? Intellectual property, Teddy. That's what the entertainment industry is built on. To establish a franchise like Star Wars or Game of Thrones, you've got to start with intellectual property. What if you're not an intellectual? To put it kindly, I won't know. The best way to create intellectual property is to start by writing a book. Then the book gets adapted into an award-winning TV series. And then HBO hands me a zillion dollars to develop spin-off projects. That's how you build an IP empire. Except you've only written three words, and two of them are your name. You can't rush, genius. Creating original IP is tough. All the good ideas are taken already. If I write about superheroes, I'm copying the Avengers. If I do a zombie story, I'm ripping off with The Walking Dead. Just write something that's never been written before. Thanks, Teddy. Why didn't I think of that? Make it about yourself and call it The Walking Brain Dead. Jake's star chaser gazed at the two moons rising above the dusty plains of the desert planet Belcor. Somewhere in that night sky, Jake thought to himself, the ruthless raiders of the Emperor Grog were Jake's star chaser? Are you serious? What's wrong with it? Uh, hello? Jake's star chaser, Luke Skywalker. You're ripping off Star Wars. I'm not ripping off Star Wars. Then why is Jake's father named God Schmader? This is like third grade when you wrote a story called Scarlet's Web. So what if my IP project is sort of like Star Wars? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. What are they going to do? Sue me? Ding dong. It's from the Walt Disney Company. Delete, delete, delete. I'm reworking my story so that it's no longer a Star Wars ripoff. Instead of being set in outer space, it's now set in inner space. Tick tack. It's about a guy who shrinks himself to subatomic size and explores the brains of psychopathic circus clowns. Weird stuff happens inside the human brain. I've noticed. Nate Wright, Ace Reporter, at your service. Got any assignments for me? No, slow news day. I could do a new student profile. Hmm? Yeah, those are fun. They're a great way for everybody to get to know the new kid. Okay, give me 500 words by Thursday. Great, I'll set up the interview with her. Her? Wait, who's her? Melissa, the new kid. You mean the hot girl you have a crush on? Nice try. You're going to profile the other new kid. There's such a thing as too much editorial oversight. What are you looking at? 
Hi, Mr. Holloway. Hello, Nate. Are you looking for Dee Dee? Yup, we're going to the movies. Dee Dee, Nate's here. What movie are you kids seeing? No idea. I'm leaving that up to her. Good luck with that. Meow. Yeah. Cats? We're going to cats? We agreed I choose the movie, but I don't want to see cats. Nate, I know you have allurophobia, but there's nothing to be afraid of. There aren't any real cats in the movie. It's just actors who look like cats, singing and dancing. Now I'm terrified. Prepare to be dazzled. And for a senior citizen discount, enter the number of tickets and then press this green button. Okay. Is there anything else I need to know? Let go! Stop being a baby! Don't make me go in there! You're going! Suck it up! Some stuff you just have to figure out on your own. Look what the cat dragged in. Ha uh ha. -huh. Shall we get some snacks before the movie? Dee Dee, why do you have to wear a costume? Look around. Nobody else felt the need to dress like a cat. School picture guy? Call me Skimble Shanks. School picture guy? You're a cats fan? I am indeed, my boy. But I thought you liked Star Wars and stuff like that. Oh, I do. The Rise of Skywalker is playing here too. Between shows, I'll be switching into my Chewbacca costume. So you're saying you dig fur? It's a bit warm, but I've lost five pounds since Tuesday. Come on, Nate. Let's go in. I want to make sure we get a good seat. I don't think that's going to be a problem. This is great. We can sit anywhere. Prep me for this movie, Dee Dee. Prep you? Look, you dragged me to cats, so the least you can do is tell me what to expect. What's the story? Oh, there's no story. I mean, there's a plot, but it's basically incomprehensible. Plus, there's Taylor Swift. Kill me now. School picture guy! Wanna sit with us? No thanks, amigo. When I watch a performance of Cats, I must do so in my own individual way. With a jumbo bucket of popcorn and six boxes of Reese's Pieces, I was sweet and salty before sweet and salty was a thing. Okay, thanks anyway. Nate's not home? No, his dad says he went to the movies with a Dee Dee. And that one is called Rum Tum Tugger. I will never forgive you for this. This movie is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. The plot makes no sense, the actors look creepy and... Wait, is that the guy from Hobbs and Shaw? Wherever he's from, he's yummy. That's the guy from Hobbs and Shaw! Hey, right. Oh, uh, hi guys. Did you just see The Grudge? Was that movie bonkers or what? Uh, yeah, bonkers. Right. What was your favorite part? Um, okay, I'm ready. Sorry for the wait. There's a long line at the litter box. Ha <laughs> ha. And a rough day gets even rougher. I'm home. Hi, Nate. How's your afternoon? Well, let's see. I sat through the worst movie of all time and I dropped a whole box of junior mints on the floor. Then a couple guys from school saw me in the lobby with Dee Dee, who, by the way, was dressed as a cat. Such suffering. I believe I've earned a dinner of pizza and ice cream. Heads up, Gramps! We did it! We conquered Breakneck Hill! Shh! We're the first ones who've done it. The other kids won't even try. Ha! Chickens! 
They're afraid of all the bumps and jumps. We're not, though. It was man versus mountain, and we won. On a puffy, comfortable snow tube with handles. Tap, tap. When I was your age, I rode Breakneck Hill on a piece of cardboard. In his old age, he's taken up trolling. In October! The door's opening. Ha! Now we've got him. What the? Come on! That's not fair, Nate. What's not fair? You obviously knew Teddy and I had a snowball ambush planned for you, so you're using your grandfather as a human shield. Pretty sneaky, Nate. Sneaky? In a moment of need, I turn to my family for help. That's not sneaky. Wap! Pow! That's sneaky. Good arm, Graham. Can we have cocoa now? Want to come over to Mark's house? He's got a new air hockey table. Ah, oh, I can't. I've got detention. But wait here. Maybe I can sweet talk Miss Sherry into giving me a break. There will be no breaks, except to my spirit. Get in here! Coach John, where's Mr. Shuriki? Not my concern, cowboy. What is my concern is that you've landed in detention for what Mrs. Godfrey calls classroom hijinks. Describe the hijinks. They weren't hijinks. They were low jinx. Very low. Or medium. They might have been medium jinx. Cripes. So this is detention? You just sit here for an hour? Not always. Sometimes Mrs. Shuriki and I chat. Chat about what? Well, she likes to complain about her husband. Hey, do you want to complain about your wife? Oh, you mean my wife who ran off with the tennis instructor? Whoops. You want to know what detention meant when I was in school? It meant the vice principal dragging you onto the football field and making you run wind sprints. It meant running until you passed out from heat stroke. It meant coming this close to death. Those were the days. The trauma runs deep. Listen, Junior, you may think that teachers enjoy punishing kids, but we don't. We give you discipline so you'll have the chance to succeed at life. So, you know what you have to do? Succeed at life? No. Deep knee bends. Start with 50. If you ask me, detention seems like a colossal waste of time. I totally agree. You sit here and twiddle your thumbs when you could be doing something. Exactly. So, can I go? I miss the thumb twiddling. Keep your back straight! What are you up to, boy? It's Groundhog Day, Gramps. I'm waiting to see if he sees his shadow. Emphasis on the word waiting. We've got to help the little critter out of his hole. But wait, what if... Gah! Something's got me! It's biting my hand! Yeah! Flump! Fun holiday? What kind of psycho grandpa carries around a packet of fake blood? I think it's cool that we get to design our own science projects. Me too. I'm going to grow bean plants in all sorts of different soil types. I'm doing a nutritional study of school lunches. What about you, Nate? I intend to prove scientifically and once and for all that Mrs. Godfrey hates me. Oh, brother. Nate, you can't do a science project called Mrs. Godfrey hates me. Why not? She does hate me, but it has nothing to do with science. Sure it does. It's psychology. I'll do a psychological study to figure out why Mrs. Godfrey yells at me all the time. 
Perhaps she yells at you because you keep doing boneheaded things. In science, we call that a variable. Nate, what are you doing with that clipboard? Collecting data. Data? You're supposed to be doing the worksheet I gave you. I know, but I'm in the middle of an important science project. During social studies? Promise us you're not trying to clone yourself again. Zip it, Gina. Nate, put away that clipboard. I can't. I'm doing research. You're just standing there looking at me. Right. How is that research? If I tell you that, it might skew the results. Results of what? She's generating a lot of data. Well, my research has produced some very interesting results. Mrs. Godfrey yelled at me 14 times this week. The woman just kept losing it. We're looking at some serious psychological problems here. I'm certainly looking at one. I mean, why is she so obsessed with me? Mrs. Godfrey hates me. That's the title of your science project? Yes, and I've proven it. See the chart of all the times she's yelled at me? Hmm? And what are your conclusions? Conclusions? Yes. How do you explain Mrs. Godfrey's behavior? Irrational psychosis. There's a lot of that going round. Job Shadow with your host, Biff Biffwell. It's almost Valentine's Day, friends, so I'm job shadowing the one and only Dan Cupid. What's your assignment, Dan? It's a toughie, Biff. Cloud Nine. I need to find a romantic partner for Dad about middle-aged divorce. Hmm, that does sound challenging. Fortunately, he's in a great location. The supermarket, where many a love match is made. Step one, I'll hit dad with one of my love dots. Step two, oh no, what's wrong, Dan? I forgot to refill my quiver back at the office. I'm out of arrows. We've got a love struck dad on our hands. This means he'll fall in love with the first thing he sees. Irresistible. So, please let someone else try the free samples. What's up? Just working on a Valentine's card for Mallory. What? Since when do you like Mallory? I've always liked Mallory, deep down. She's got exactly what I'm looking for. A pulse? Right. Plus I hear she's about to dump Connor. Mallory, 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 Mallory. You're like a masterpiece in an art gallery. You're worth more than a million dollar salary. And you're good for me, unlike a calorie. It's hard to believe you wrote that yourself. And I'm adding a wallet size photo of me. A Valentine's card, huh? Who's it for? Mallory. Mallory? Dude, she's going out with Connor. Yeah, but from what I hear, she's going to dump him any minute. And when she does, guess who'll be right there to pick up the pieces? There may be more pieces than you thought. Oh, hi, Connor. But Mallory, I don't want to talk about it anymore, Connor. It's over. I hope we can still be friends. Aloha. And now that's timing. Mallory, happy Valentine's Day. For me? Of course for you. A homemade cause from yours truly. I'm betting that you're ready to love again now that you've broken up with Connor. That was 15 seconds ago. I believe in being proactive. How'd it go with Mallory, Romeo? Yeah, what happened? I gave her the card I made, I wrote her my poem, I laid on the charm and asked her to be my valentine. And she said, 
You're the kid who's always making armpit farts during social studies. And she didn't say it in an admiring way? No, she did not. What a waste of a bad poem.